Hey guys, we're going to do these fun fighting Siamese fighting fish, beta fish, whatever you want to call them. I call them really cute and a lot of fun and super relaxing to do. Let's get started. Good morning, people of my community. Thank you so much for being here. I do not have the little picture of me down here. I moved my cameras around and something's not working and I couldn't get it figured out before the show this morning. So we are going to just do it this way. I am really excited. I came up with this sketch of two betta fish on a big huge piece of paper. We're only going to do one and it's going to be a probably more like this simpler one right here with all of his fins and everything going the one direction. Woohoo! Welcome everyone for coming to the show this morning. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. If you are new here, make sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos go up. We're going to get into this really quick. I am going to show you how I make made this background right here. This is the one I'm going to actually draw on, but I taped a piece of paper down. This is 140 pound watercolor paper. I have just any old watercolors. This happens to be the little 12 pan watercolor set from Arteza. Excuse me. And it is really fun to use for these kind of, kind of little uh, sketchbook type paintings. We are going to make this fun gradient right here and we're going to do it top down. So we're going to work with our colors here at the top and have them pull down the paper. I'm going to set it over to this one over to the side and let it dry so we can just get right into drawing on that one. Yay, good morning. I am so excited. So this is really fast. I'm going to get this background on just so you know how I'm putting it in. I'm using a spray bottle to get my paper nice and wet. You know, like really wet. And you can, there, you can kind of see how I've got water running. Yeah, that's, that's how wet it is. Ah, soggy. <laughs> And then I'm going to get my watercolors wet and I'm just getting just this corner. I want the light blue, the green, and the dark blue. We're going to get some of this light blue kind of all over the place, really light. I hope you all are doing well today. I am feeling pretty good about things. You know, sometimes you wake up and the morning just feels good. Today's one of those days. The morning just felt good. I am just mixing up blue, green. Ooh, that's, that's a lot of dark blue right there, isn't it? And we're getting it on here on the one edge. This is going to end up being the bottom of our painting, our drawing, our sketch, whatever we want to call it. And then I want to make sure that there's enough water here. And then we're going to pick it up and let it run. But I want to run backwards first and get that line of paint all pulled up all along this back edge. And then we're going to tip it and we're going to let it pour down. And that's going to give us some fun organic shapes. Remember, the paint is going to dry lighter. It doesn't matter if, ooh, I like that. Maybe we'll stop right there. It doesn't matter if we are, you know, painting darker colors here. They're going to dry a bit lighter. I'm just wiping some of that paint off so it doesn't pour all over my table. Since I've already got my table wet once, this is just going to be a little bit of an underwater. Look how fast that was. Underwater watercolor. 
basically like the bottom of a fish pole bowl. Boy, I might be feeling good, but my words aren't. <laughs> All right, so there. I'm going to set that over to the side, and we will come back and take a look at it when it's all dry. But here's one that's all dry, very soft. It, I didn't get the colors quite as dark on it. So there we are. We're going to doodle this fighting fish, this awesome. These guys are so awesome. Now, betta fish are, um, they're fierce. They're small, but they're fierce. And I like that. I like that they're, I'm trying to get this turned so you can see it a little bit. Now, I want you to notice, oh, I did. I got water on my, the pen is waterproof. So if you want to go back in and waterproof, waterproof, watercolor your fish to give it more vibrancy, because these guys are so brilliant. They are vibrant. They are gorgeous. I'm going to zoom in. This is the bottom of my page right here. I've got my fi my fish is going to go on. I'm doing it all in pen so you can see it, but you can certainly do this with a pencil. I am first going to put on his his head, and I have to decide, is he pointing up and away, or is he pointing towards me? I like the up and away, and the reason why is because then you only have to do one eye. <laughs> so let's do him up and away. And what you put on first is basically, I just grabbed the wrong, did I grab the wrong one? I grabbed the wrong pen again. I keep grabbing the one that's, that's dead. <laughs> I need to put that one someplace else. It's empty. I need to take care of the tube. There we go. This one was the good one. So we're going to put a teardrop or a petal shape. Just like that. This guy's got a chubbier face. He's got his one eye on this one side right here. Look at that. Easy, easy, easy. And a bit of an outline on it. This one might be a little more comical. I'm not sure. His gill is behind the eye here. He's got a fin, and now I did draw the line going across. No big deal. His fin is not going to be the super long one. It's kind of long. And we're going to put the outline of it. And let your line be wobbly. Look at that. It's this open, wobbly line thing. There's a line crossing. I don't care. It's okay. His fin that's coming across the top is up here. This is where it's attached. And I'm going to have this one going back. He's sort of swimming away. So this fin is coming like this. Again, if you're doing this with a pencil, don't you don't have to worry about these little crossing lines. I'm not worried about it. Wobbly. And a straight line. This shows you how long that top fin is. This really straight line here. And then this curved line shows that it's bent down. Kind of like kind of like how that's going. You see how we're using we're going to be using just tons of straight lines or wobbly lines to fill in the fin and the tail to give you that ribbony, fabric-like waviness of those fins. I think that this is really good, especially for people wanting to work with their line and learning how your pen works. Excuse me, I'm going to cough a little bit. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, one of those mornings. Haven't talked very much yet. Now I am going to go ahead. This is easy and there's going, but there's going to be a lot of details. So it looks harder than it is. There's a, 
his tail is coming around and we're not going to see all of it because part of his fin wobble 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 I'm giving him a really big tail fin there's another bit of a fin that's underneath here and he does have his fin on the other side and I'm going to show that with it swinging back huh okay I must have got some uh, I need something to draw that off of. come on there you go uh, when you draw with these pens over the top of watercolor it gets a little bit clogged sometimes draw it off on a piece of paper all right so now this looks really crazy <laughs> thank you guys so much uh, doodling like this drawing patterns just having fun figuring out ways for your fins to float this line right here I think is a little short look at that I'm not worried I'm just going to bring it like this and make it longer we've got we have crazy lines going in here and it's okay I think what I want to do to start off on his Sir Fishiness here, Mr. Fighting Fish, that we're not going to have fighting. He's going to enjoy life. I'm going to just color in that eye. A bit of black. Fish eyes pretty much are not, they, they don't reflect a lot of light. So pretty much keep it flat. I left a little sliver of white on that one edge there we go so the beta fish the fighting fish they are they're actually they they don't like to interact socially with each other but I've heard that they do like to be in tanks with companions they have, there's companions that they like to have. I'm not sure what they are. Now, but, you know, I've heard that they like companions. <laughs> I think all of us, we like some alone time, but then we also like the companionship. When you do your wobbles, now you've got something that you can start using as signposts to grab a, pull a line in pull a line in from the points where you're bumping in look at that this is going to give me spaces to fill with my pen I like giving myself smaller areas to work in have you guys ever done uh, fabric you know those beautiful waving fabrics like scarves or seeing those photographs of women underwater with all of the scarves. That's what the uh, beta fish remind me of. They remind me of people with scarves underwater. You have some choices that you can make. You can decide maybe this edge right here that I have wobbly is actually curled back. So then we can use that line. Look at that. See, you can make things work out. They don't, just because there's a line in a place you don't expect it, doesn't mean that it can't work out for you. Like, maybe I'll pull some of these lines down, make them curve. Just choose a spot. Look at that. Yeah, I I like my alone time. I guess one could say that I am kind of, well, I'm not really a loner. I like being around people. But I am, whoops, water, color, water bottle just fell down. I also like having some time on my own. I'm really enjoying that my husband has gone back to work. <laughs> for part of the day. I like having him home. I'm going to smooth out that line back there just a little bit. 
That's going to give me some places for shadows to pull in. But layering fabrics over, it's it's all an illusion. All right, so we're going to doodle in this guy. And it's going to be a lot of lines. So if you're, you know, once, if you're watching this in the replay, once we get a few of these lines on, you might decide to fast forward. And that's fine. I'm just going to start filling in lines on this fin. I, his top dorsal, dorsal fin, yeah, top. Now, see how I've got a bit of a wobble here? I'm following that wobbly line. What that does is it gives a little bit of, um, what do we want to say here? It gives it a little bit of texture. Oops, move that out of the way. Move that there. I think we're going to try the side view camera and see if, see if we can get a better view here for you. Kind of looks like he's underwater, doesn't it? So you see how I'm going right here? And I'm just going to pull right up through. See, I'm a squirrel, or chasing squirrels. I looked down and saw this edge and was like, ooh, I want to, I want to fill in some of those little ones like that. So you can really see it. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. If you're new, let me know. Leave us a leave us a comment in the chat or down below in the comment section. Do you guys uh, want koi? A koi fish? I've got a koi fish on. I've got a koi fish on the hook. I have a koi fish sitting waiting for me to draw online for you. And even though, see, even though I have that, those lines there, I can just kind of ignore the, the first spacing lines that I put in. Look at that. It just flows right in. I'm not worried about it. This is probably not something I would want to do as a left hand challenge. <laughs> but here we go. Look at that. Oh, look, I'm going to stop at that line right there and have that one curl curling back. See how it's curled in. And then this one, I think I'm going to have it curling up. Maybe that's where his fin is actually split. And you've got two layers of it right there. See how it's kind of overlapping? Or maybe it's just a fold in that's really tight. I think that's a lot of fun. Maybe I'll make some of those lines continue across a little bit. This is something where you can certainly turn on the the quiet music, enjoy a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, and just, you're just filling in lines. You can go backwards and forwards. See, I've got a line going down and then I'm just drawing up, filling it in. Almost like taking just a plain piece of paper and drawing sections on it and filling them in. See how that's going. So there was a yes, please on doing a koi. Excellent. Excellent. Because I really, if you, if you were to look around my house, you would see koi on my wall. I did fluid acrylic pouring. I did koi fish. I did a betta fish. Um, probably the most popular betta fish uh, painting out there. 
on YouTube right now is a betta fish that I did with string pulling. That was a lot of fun. Very surprising. And it's one of those projects that is, um, you never know how it's going to actually turn out. Yeah, so I am. I'm I'm wandering around here. I am filling in. I think I want to I'm just going to do some cross hatching for his little scales and shadows. So hatch one direction and then I'm cross hatching the other direction, but I'm keeping it sort of lower. for the crossing part. See how that gives him that uh, fishy scale type of feel without, whoops, <laughs> without being too hard. I think we're going to go ahead and do that up here. And okay, so I am going to draw a little bump right here. So it looks like his eye is on the other side. And then we're going to cross back the other direction. Just like that. And if you notice, I did not cross hatch through his fin. Since I could see it first, I could I could do all of his shadow all the shadow work here without going through the fin. His fin is not transparent. And then when we go in, I am going to give him like a little shoulder spot and we will give him some spaces for his for his fin to be wobbly. And that's, I mean, really and truly, if, if all you wanted was to learn how to draw a fish, we got the fish in really fast. Now it's just the time it takes to fill him in. And I think there's going to be some music. Oh, now look at that. My my wobbly line's coming here, and then it dropped down. I want it to connect up, I think. It's just, you make your own decisions on where things go here. This one's in back. I'm really rippling his fin in the back. This is the, um, it's the fin that's down here. There's, there's a fin on the bottom of the fish. I don't know what it's called. And I'm kind of making this up. This would not be a real beta fish. It's not realistic. He's not truly a cartoon, but sort of like a cartoon, I think. The face reminds me of um, Cleo from Pinocchio. <laughs> Cleo the goldfish. Anybody remember that? <laughs> I know. That's going back really old school, animation, Disney, Pinocchio. I love the cat in that cartoon, that animated film. I figure people are having fun maybe drawing along with me. So if you are drawing along with me and you want to share your artwork, please do. I have Facebook. I've got a Facebook page. 
Deliberately Creative, that you can share your artwork. You can message me on that on my page. If you don't want to share it publicly, that's fine. You can also, if you post things to Pinterest or to Instagram, you just tag at Deliberately Creative when you post it. I'll find it. If you do Instagram stories or things like that, you can mention by using the mention tag on the stickers. I'm going to keep this one lighter and the way to do that is just to not put your pen lines as close. And something with the, the watercolor on the paper before I do the pen, it's pretty and it gives you, you know, your variations in the, in the uh, color that you wouldn't get if you were trying to color around the fish. And because it's so light and we're going to, you know, put so much dark pen on here, you're really not going to notice. And that just gives us a little bit more texture in the what in the uh, goldfish. Goldfish? How about betta fish? Wow, I was talking about Cleo. That's that's where goldfish came from. So you'll see spaces where you want to put your pen lines closer. Go back in and give it some more lines. Pen lines closer together make it darker. Pen lines farther apart make it lighter. See, that's how we're doing so far. Pretty cool, huh? And you notice it is just, just lines. And they're not perfect lines. This is where having a wobbly hand, oh my goodness, is so beneficial. Look at that. Let those lines wobble. Let them have some room to wiggle. We all need room to wiggle, right? Beta fish wiggle all over the place. So I was watching some videos of people training their beta fish. Training, training them to follow the finger on the, on the glass or training them to come up and take food from their fingers. I guess once you win the trust, the, the little fish will do what you want. Some had their little betta fish swimming obstacle courses in their tanks. Have you ever had a betta fish and did you like having the betta fish? Was it an experience that was fun or were you given the fish and you, you're like, don't give people pets? <laughs> I'm making that line more choppy and wobbly. I'm letting my pen skip by not putting a lot of pressure down. And then I can get a more solid line by putting more pressure. I am working on the textured side of the watercolor paper. This Arteza watercolor paper has a smooth side and a textured side. And I am working on the textured side. One, because it allows my pen to skip and uh, bounce and it gives more texture to the fins. And sometimes unexpected things happen. Now right up here, underneath of that top fin, I am going to make sure that it's really dark. So I'm just putting a lot of lines very close together underneath. So that way this one will look like it's on top. They are beautiful. 
little ballerinas underwater. But they can be um, tricky, I guess, is if you don't have a consistent temperature, it's a little bit trickier sometimes. At least that's what I've been reading, noticing. See how this side is darker going back and in. That's making this front part of this fin feel like it's bowed up. It's just putting lines on. Now, I'm going to move over. Under here, along this edge, I'm going to flip this up. Under this edge right here is actually going to be darker. This whole thing is scooping in. Yes, shaky hands come in handy. See, and you can like work a little bit farther away from you. This is actually pretty far in front of me right now. So I'm trying to keep my head out from under the camera. I am pulling the line towards me. Pens tend to work better when you pull towards you versus when you push the pen, although you can get really cool effects. Let's see if we can zoom this in a little bit more. No, not pull it over. Zoom it in. I'm zooming this in on the desk, so on the, uh, the computer not on the camera so it's kind of a digital zoom <laughs> but you want to make sure that this edge right here shows up more and I think it needs to be lighter than back here so I'm going to say that this one is pulling up and around we're going down and that would have been flipping over give yourself little guides but then it's going to be flipping back up out here so I figured this is probably probably like the half moon or full moon I'm not sure <laughs> type beta fish where it's not quite as long and scarf-like, but it has that fluid mo movement to it. And those lines might change, and it's okay. I think I want to get the rest of this top fin here on before I do that, because I'm going to be working this back one in behind everything. Oh, hey, I am so glad that you guys are here. I really appreciate you. I appreciate knowing that you don't mind hanging out for, for silly doodles or for ones that make more, you know, of an actual thing. This one, wouldn't it be stunning on a Father's Day card or on a, a graduation card? something for a graduate, something special that, you know, that commemorates something that is so important. Graduating is so, so important. Okay. I'm picking up a little bit of watercolor, I think, in my pen every once in a while. And so all I'm doing is taking it and rubbing it off on another piece of paper. So we've got that. We need it to be darker in underneath. So just add more lines. Pick an angle, follow that line, but then let it taper off as it's coming out into this middle bit. You're going to get a little bit of reflection of light.
I did a lot of stippling artwork back when I just got out of high school and while I was in college and after I graduated, I did a lot of stippling. So this is kind of like stippling, but it goes a lot faster. But it's the closer you put your, your ink marks, the darker it is. Try and have your lines follow the direction you want this object to be going. And thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate you. Now, this is my no more fighting fighting fish. So he has decided that fighting is not worth it. That cohabitation with others is a beneficial thing. And you know what? The, that line, I, I did it backwards. I want that line to be coming this way. And you know what? <laughs> we can do that. Look, I just changed the angle of my lines. The new coloring book is not quite available yet. We, I am waiting with bated breath for the Art Sherpa to uh, get that into, the, into their shop and start getting it out for distribution. If you didn't know, I did a coloring book with the Art Sherpa. It's the World of the Art Sherpa some of her most favorite paintings and I did them in my doodle style as mandalas. So as soon as the book is released and I get my copy, I will be doing a look at this book has been released, but it's a coloring book. There's 25 images in it. It's on watercolor paper and you'll be able to do markers and watercolor. But if you're looking for a book right now, Fun Floral Mandalas. I'm kind of zoomed in here. If you're looking for a coloring book right now, I have Fun Floral Mandalas, Relaxation and Stress Relief. There's some easy ones, and there's some in here that are much more detailed. See, this is not watercolor paper. This is like text weight paper. So um, watercolor a little bit, but not, um, not too much on my one from Amazon, but it's available on my book. My coloring book is available on Amazon right now. The Sherpa coloring book, they are because of all of the things going on in the world right now, manufacturing is a little bit tricky, but it is a labor of love. I've been working for over a year with the Art Sherpa on this project. So keep your eyes open. I will be making an announcement. The Art Sherpa will be making an announcement. This is the biggest collaboration I've ever done with someone. So it's, it's pretty exciting. And that's Cinnamon Cooney, the art Sherpa, her world, my art, my imagining. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So is anybody up for, you know, a random, I just turn on the camera and just color and chat with music or not chat too much, but just color. I can pull out my coloring book and do some coloring. I know there's a lot of my community that have the coloring book, so we could all color the same picture. 
and then we could have a, a little gallery. If you tag me on Instagram, I could do a an Instagram story with everybody's colored artwork. Now, right now, you see how this is kind of blending in? I want a little bit more I want a little bit more separation between this flipped over part and that inside part. That's where going back and doing it darker. <laughs> yes, the collaboration with Cinnamon Cooney is amazing. That was my big announcement. So if you saw the uh, video that said big announcement, that was the big announcement was that I am doing a collaboration with Cinnamon Cooney, the art Sherpa. We are, the art Sherpa is publishing a coloring book and it's the world of the art Sherpa and it's all my artwork, my drawings. And it's all in the mandala style. So you've got girls with umbrellas and you have owls and there's um, uh, the Paris girl with the Eiffel Tower. That one is super cool. There's the girl, the lavender girl. Yeah, Cinnamon Cooney has uh, been talking about this recently. So that's why I figured I could start saying something on my channel now too. But getting that, that space, see how that's making that look like it's deeper in now? And it's got a ripple because I'm leaving a highlight here. So it's shadow, it's highlight, it's shadow, and then it's highlighted. Drawing with me is a stress buster. So I hope that coloring with me would be a stress buster also. Um, now, how about, or how about, since not everybody has the coloring book, has my coloring book, we could do a coloring where we draw in one video and then we all come back and color the same thing, kind of like the cups. People seem to like that, uh, doing a sampler of something and then filling them in. All right. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I am looking at the chat and seeing all the, the words of of uh, encouragement here. I thank you so much. I guess I went ahead and fi I'm finishing this fin before I go and do that top one. And that's okay because now I know how light I need to keep this around that outside edge, that top fin. Because we put the watercolor in the background, and we did that gradation, so it's darker here at the bottom and it gets lighter as we go up. It's making the fish feel like he's already colored in also. Oh yeah, you can just color in whatever color books you've got, you know. Um, I, I may go ahead and put one of the pages from my coloring book on the downloadable patterns and templates page. So if people don't have the coloring, have a coloring book at all, you can have a coloring page to color on and then you'd be able to print on whatever paper your, your printer prints on. I'm just making it a little bit darker underneath that edge. But see how I'm following the lines though? I'm not going sideways. I'm not cross hatching underneath here because that doesn't feel right to me. Now, if it feels right to you, go for it. But I want to make that edge very solid underneath. So I'm just working it in. 
Doodle, doodle, doodle. Have fun. Do the doodle, guys. Do the doodle. That's our that's our new thing. Do the doodle. Maybe I should... Ooh. Anybody want to buy a t-shirt? Oh, you don't have to be drawing my my fish. You can be drawing anything. Anybody want to... Would anybody buy a t-shirt if I did a do the doodle t-shirt? It would be our joke, but it would be fun too for anybody else. But we could have a do the doodle t-shirt. I'm kind of in the mood to refresh my Teespring store, get some fun things in. Although I do have things like the, um, I have a t-shirt with this. Actually, I have a whole bunch of project products with the um, poppies. Let's see. I have a, a t-shirt and I have that pinned on this, um, on this live stream. So I've got the poppies with the, um, the pretty little, the pretty little flowers as a t-shirt. There's also a bag. If you wanted to color, I have my, oh, maybe it's on the, do I have it right here? Ah. The um, hibiscus and hummingbird. I have a hibiscus and hummingbird tote bag that is um, black and white. So you can color it with fabric paint. It's on a tote bag. So cool. And that's on my Teespring shop also. So do the doodle. I need to write that down. We're going to say do the doodle. Do the doodle. And the doodle will be all doodled in. I think that would be a lot of fun. So thank you guys for helping me design a new shirt. <laughs> we could also put that on a tote bag. Do the doodle on a tote bag because that would be great for carrying our supplies around. Going to the park. Doing our socially distanced artwork. <laughs> you know, these chats are probably the best socially distanced um way to get together. I like this better than a Zoom because not everybody feels comfortable being on camera. And right now, I mean, look at that. I'm not even on camera. And I'm not on camera today, guys, because I didn't realize that when I moved my computer and my camera around that it was going to cause an issue. Oh, wow. He's looking so good. I want to extend some of those lines, make it not look quite so um, rigid around this edge here. Feather them in. Feathering it in. There we go. Do the doodle t-shirt. Yeah. It's, it's the new dance craze. It's do the doodle and we could have a, somebody dancing with a Sharpie or do I have to make, oh, <laughs> would you guys even watch a silly video if I did a silly video? Um, I've done silly video once before and it didn't go off as well as I thought it would. So I don't know, maybe I'm just not silly enough or maybe or maybe my audience that I've got just doesn't like silly as much I think you guys like silly you guys would go with anything I did because you are my awesome awesome community you're so clever you fill my days with all your projects Aww. Thank you. You know, I like, um, I like doing so many different things that 
I am I am just absolutely pleased as punch that you guys, my my awesome awesome pa patrons, my people in chat who come to all of the chats, you guys are the ones that I'm doing this for. You know, you are the ones that I make my t-shirts for. <laughs> You're the ones that I do all of this fun and silliness. And you're the ones that hang out with me even when I go off and do strange, silly things. You know, this channel is for creativity. This channel is to explore all kinds of things. I kind of got sucked down the trail of, of the fluid acrylic pouring for a couple years. And it was awesome. And it really built my channel. And I'm just hoping that I'm not chasing people away with doing my doodles. But this is really where my heart is. This is really the art style that I have done most of my life. I've done pen and ink. I've done a little bit of watercolor washing in it. See how I'm getting some texture in here by going along and adding an extra bump and then following that? Put an extra wiggle. Let your, your hand wobble. This is the perfect project for people who say, I can't draw a straight line. Guess what? You don't need a straight line. Very few straight lines in real life. I mean, architecture has straight lines, but nature? Nature tends to make the lines bend to whatever needs to be. See a tree on the coast and how after the wind has been blowing for 50 years and it's blown to the side? <laughs> being your senior daycare, I, you know, I have folks who are watching with their grandkids. I have folks who are watching with their, their children. The parents are drawing right along with the kids. This is an awesome project to do with anybody. We are not limited now, my lessons are geared to, you know, older teens and adults, but kids, kids are more fearless. And they will take any opportunity to do art. If they are an art kid, give them the good pen. And you know what? This eco pen is actually a good pen. So, you know, Diane, that is amazing to hear. Diane just said that I'm not chasing her away with my doodles, that I'm actually giving her something new to do because, you know, after a certain amount of time, the, any type of art can get a little bit tiring or a little bit feeling like it's the same thing over and over. It's one of the things about doodles though, that I've found is that there's so many things you can do. Oh, I got a, um, I got a, a cup. Let's go wide. And I was thinking about maybe doodling and putting it inside of a cup. What do you think? This is, um, one of those ones that comes from the Oriental Trading Company. And if you look in their uh, clearance, in the fall, after all of their vacation Bible schools and things like that are done, they have these things that were set up. And you can take any piece of paper, draw it off as the, from the, the insert as a template, and doodle right on it, or 
do some kind of doodle on watercolor paper and see this isn't quite big enough to cut down if I was doodling this on a bigger piece of paper I could cut it down and put it inside of that cup that would be a lot of fun all right so I'm building all kinds of ideas and I'm not sure if you guys want to do them I have found small ones of these cups at the dollar store they are like um, 10 ounce instead of 16 or, or 14 but that's a lot of fun I need to continue getting this done don't I oh wow we're on an hour I really need to I need to put my skates on guys let's get this so I'm going to kind of focus here I am so but it does make me really happy to hear that people who came because of the acrylic pouring are staying because of the doodling or because of the creativity and if you're not talking and planning out all of your your content on your YouTube channel you guys are helping me plan my content did you know that so like I said I appreciate so many of my patrons are here oh patron alert you should have a notification that I posted last night check your email for the notification it may have come through twice because I updated it and there are new coloring sheets and new photo references and there's a new patron only page on my website so if that's something that you're interested in check it out check out my patreon and all of this is for everybody I have a couple things that I'm doing for people at the higher levels like putting their actual name on the end of a video but pretty much everybody gets everything so if I do a patron only live stream once I hit 50 patrons we're doing a patron only live stream uh, and that will then become monthly we'll do a monthly patron only live stream and I'll pull my patrons to find out when is the best time for you guys I am going I have my patron only web page that's going to be avail that's available to all of my patrons at all levels even and you can do anything so even though I have a a level that says it's a two dollar level for my lowest one if you can only do a dollar a month go for it there's always the custom what cheesy movie Xanadu call oh because of skates see and I think of getting my skates on because that was something that my grandma would always say when we needed to get moving is get your skates on guys we've got to go my my mom would say that too when I was little when we had skates <laughs> back in the day now my wheels are I run on two wheels and it's I've got for being a person that's not really a biker I've got three bicycles I don't know how do I have three bicycles I guess because one of them is an electric bike two of them are folding bikes <laughs> for the poor paintings that yes and the doodles thank you Jody thank you I wow okay we're getting close we've got his back fin and his his front his front wing his front fin so this is this one right here is his little fins are going like this one is forward and one is back so okay I gotta my hands have to do the thing I have to show my hands so the fin on the front here is going forward like this and this one is going back like that <laughs> 
<laughs> so there we go. I have to, sometimes me and talking with my hands, I just have to. But let's get this really quick. I am so happy that you guys are enjoying these. It, it just makes me happy and I, I laugh and I giggle and, you know. Some days I wonder why I do things and then I go and I read the comments from you guys. Okay, yeah, I'm getting teary. Haha, -ha. good thing you can't see my face right now. But I read your comments. I read every single comment. And this community is like so supportive. And I appreciate that so, so much because, you know, there are days, everybody has days, guys. Everybody has days where things are hard and we question our life choices. But doing YouTube has really been the thing that's made me so happy with life the universe and everything. <laughs> All the hand poses. Ah. <laughs> uh, yay. So, you know, now we just need YouTube to realize that I'm not doing fluid pouring anymore and start sharing my doodle videos with a wider community. YouTube still thinks I'm pouring and my number one video on my channel still, even though I haven't been pouring for, you know, almost eight months, the number one video on my channel is the top 10 things that people need to know when they're starting to pour. It's a good video. <laughs> Don't get me wrong on that. It is a very good video. I need to come up with my you know, top tips for, for doodling or top tips for making your art better, because you know what? One of my top tips is definitely doodle because doodling is drawing without pressure. Doodling is drawing without any pressure. Because look at that. I'm changing this up as we go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's looking so cute. Oh, you know, YouTube, the, the thing about YouTube is that they're giving me a free, a free platform to do my videos, to share my artwork. And they're also, I want to flip that up a little bit. They're also giving me an opportunity to earn a small, very small amount of money from the ads that are run. Very small. I am not earning a living on here, guys. It is definitely part of the gig economy, meaning I earn a small amount from lots of different, lots of different things. I earn a small amount of money and it pulls it together. Um, I'm very thankful that my husband has a full-time job. And that I am able to do this. I earn a part-time income. I'd love to get this to the point where I'm earning a full-time income. And that's where, you know, Patreon certainly helps. But I... I am not counting on any one thing as my main source of income in this world because anything can anything can change. You know, YouTube could YouTube could go away all of a sudden. And then 
if you're not following me on some other platform, you would not know how to find me. Which is why Patreon is a really good thing. Now, I need to darken up following my lines right there. Yeah, well, you know, they, they, they give me a free platform. YouTube is not telling me I'm boring. I think YouTube is telling me that, well, I need to fix something. Maybe my thumbnails aren't good. Maybe, you know, I'm not clickable enough out there in the world. More people click the like button, more people click on the videos, watch the whole video. Then YouTube will start... Look at that, guys. Then YouTube will start sharing it out there with more people. Oh my goodness gracious. We have fins flowing. We've got fishy all over the place. Uh, this is going to be another postcard that I will be sending to, with all of the uh, paint on the back and everything. This is another card that I will be sending off to one of my patrons. I am doing a patron only giveaway each month where um, I will put everybody that's a patron into a, a number generator and pull a name and they will get a card that month uh, for the month that you have paid into. So if you sign up right now, Patreon will not charge your credit card right now. They charge, I have it set up so that it, you get charged on the first of the month right now. Um, I might be changing that to where you get charged when you sign up. But the problem with that is if you sign up in the last half of the month, you're paying for only two weeks and then starting at the beginning of the month, paying for the, the full month. What do you guys think? That's a question for you. What do you guys think? Should I be doing my patron where as soon as you sign up, you're paid? Because then, um, you know, I don't have anybody just signing up, getting the, um, getting the password for the page where they can download everything and then leaving before they've even paid. I don't know. I, I just, I don't want to be seen as greedy, I think. <laughs> um... You like the first of the month. Yeah. Um, that's, that's kind of where I think, oh, draw some, you know what? I might draw some bubbles on here, but I want to take a good picture of this before I put bubbles on and we're already over an hour and I wanted to try and keep this to an hour today. So I think I might play with bubbles on another one. We'll Maybe I'll come in, I'll have the fish mostly done, and I will work on filling in a fin and then doing bubbles. How's that? We will do some bubbles on another video. I promise. That just gives us more things for people to come and watch, right? <laughs> so remember, guys, to do something creative. Uh, let's see what it looks like from a side view. Oh, look at that from the side view. Remember to do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. Click on that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, and if you're interested, check out my Patreon. I would love it. And join our happy community over there. Take care, guys, and I'll see you soon.